Hello everyone and welcome to a special, uh, I guess a bonus episode here on the Procrastinators channel. Uh, today, me and my hermanos are going to be talking about a, a little story you might have heard of called The Triflers. That's right, it's the, uh, the world famous earth shattering book by our, our friend Monkey Jones here. And uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna talk about it. I just read it. Uh, on the plane from Anime Expo, and I finished it, and I'm bursting with things to say about it, and points to make, and brilliant uh, uh, bits of, of rhetoric to expunge from my being. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. I, I don't know what their excuse is for being here. I, and I, uh, I, Oh, I monkey for book sales. It. For book sales, of course. of course. Yeah, I'm just here to sell books. I don't give a shit about <laughs> you guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jesse just read it last I night, right? I also just All read one. it last night. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I bought it. Like months ago, I read ten like ten pages. I got a little like to the part where like Dawn gets locked in the freezer, and that's where I stopped. And like I just mm -hmm. couldn't like ten pages to halfway that's pretty through far. the book. That's pretty far. And, like I just stopped. Yeah. I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't pick the book up anymore because I just hate Monkey so much. But <laughs> yeah, right. Um, last night, because Nate had posted about it on Twitter, I'm like, oh god, everyone's still reading that damn book. I better finish it too. <laughs> and then uh, it was it was said that we do a podcast today. And I was told that you know we might we might get a new member of the procrastinators, and I had to put a stop to that because that's how <laughs> because every time we have a guest on the show, he becomes a real procrastinator. That's how I ended up with Mumkey in the first place. So no more yeah. no more new procrastinators. I had to put a stop to it. I said, God damn it! If it'll stop someone else from being on this podcast, I will read the book tonight, and that's what I well, did. Well, now we're gonna start all these rumors. We might as well say <laughs> who this mystery man was who we wanted to prevent it was from our, joining it was, the show. It was our it was our good friend and horrible collaborator, the mysterious rhinoceros. Who <laughs> yes. will never be a there, real but for the grace of God, there, but for the grace of God, goes a new yeah. addition to our merry brood. <laughs> so I stayed up all night, not today, reading the book. I, I pulled a Mario Quintanilla, only instead yeah. of teaching, I was learning. <laughs> We should say that Tom wanted to be here, but he's out of town right now, so he couldn't. That's true. He was actually, you know, in, in all fairness, he's the one who read it before any of us. Yeah, not so before me. The what the fuck the are you talking about? I read it first. Oh, shit, you're right. I totally forgot, because you don't matter. Uh, right, but Tom's <laughs> the first real person. He's the first real person who read it. Um, well, okay, so we're all up to speed. We've all fucking read this book, and we've got the author here, so, uh, so let's just dive the fuck in. So, um, I don't know, should we, should we just talk about our general thoughts? On, uh, on having finished it. I've certainly got some... Uh, Why don't you uh, go ahead since feelings. you're like brimming at the fucking... Yeah, <laughs> like you were, you're, you're like, were you guys, remarkably yeah. <laughs> affected by it, it seems, on Twitter. Real quick, before I, you start, I do want to say mm -hmm. that since I was a young boy, um, mm -hmm. my dream of being an author was to like go on book tours and shit. But now, just sitting in my bedroom with three of my uh, friends online, mm -hmm. my stomach is in knots and I feel physically ill. Aww. So maybe I'm not, maybe I don't have what it takes to go on a book tour with all these fucking people. Well, that's what Maddox was like, right? During his first book tour, as I remember in some interview, but then he became the god we all know today, so don't worry about it. This is all, it's all part of the growing process. As long as uh, my fall from grace is 15 years out, I think I'll be fine. <laughs> you know, oh, you know what? In all fairness, I should say, uh, Monkey, is there any sort of uh, preamble you want to give? Anything we should say before, I don't know, diving into it, just since you're, since you're the main man? Anything um, uh, you want to say? I mean, say? I guess I'll just say we're going to go into heavy spoilers probably, but really right, that shouldn't right. bother you. Too much and if and, you've already yeah. read it then you should especially enjoy the podcast and yeah i'd say if, if you can i'd say go read it before listening to this if you can go buy it and then read it and then come listen to this in that order that would be best but if you want to listen hey you're gonna you're gonna get some interesting shit out of this anyway so uh okay so so right off the bat uh it's it's very interesting the way that you've structured the book uh you know and i'm just going to the, with the super basic details here but the way that you structured it from from the uh perspective of multiple different protagonists they all count as protagonists right is that is that accurate is that the book lingo to use here whatever it doesn't matter the point is <laughs> you've got uh you've got dawn you've got mason uh and you've got mario as as the main guys who who are speaking here so you've got mario the school shooter uh, Don, the sociopathic manipulator evil character, and Mason, kind of the didn't do nothing good guy. Genki! Sorry um, about that. <laughs> yeah, you should be sorry. This is professional work we're doing here. Uh, so, 
I mean, immediately, uh, you know, it took a while for me to figure out, you know, kind of what Dawn's character was going to play into. She's kind of like the main driver of everything that happens in the story, for, for the most part, except obviously uh, some, some shit goes down with Mario uh, that, I mean, the, the book begins with we know he's the shooter, so it's not like that's a spoiler or anything. We know he's doing the shooting, it's just building up to that point. Um, and so it's kind of learning backwards how things got to that point, and really, really what, uh, Mario might have done it regardless of what happened. He, in fact, he probably would have, but it, it's the way that, that Don manipulates him and encourages him and makes things worse for him when it was entirely possible that things could have gone better. I, I have a gigantic written up analysis of Don's character here in this, in this notepad document that I wrote, um, while we were while we were waiting to get together here, just going into specifically the ending and why she is writing, because because from for her part, Dawn's uh, input in the story is from the perspective of a letter written to her mother after all the shit has gone down, and so I put together this whole big analysis of like, okay, so Dawn is a sociopath who manipulated all these people in the Triflers into doing some fucked up shit. But, but it's very interesting because every account that we've got here is in the form of sort of a journal entry or, uh, you know, or, or Mario's manifesto. Or in Don's case, it is, it's that letter written to her mother. But the thing is that we learn at the very end of the fucking book is that her letter was written, and I actually suspected this from the very beginning. Don's letter was written with an agenda. It was, it's full of at least several notable lies. And it's possible the entire thing was a lie. So just for example, um... The the because Don's really the character that I am the most fascinated by. I, I kind of relate to Mason the most, of course, as I'm sure everybody does. Um, uh, and uh, uh, you, you, do you relate more to Mario? I mean, I don't know if I relate to any of the characters in the story in the slightest. Mason's a totally normal kid, I except mean, for the fact that he's got severe depression. The, the one who I uh, felt like I understood the most was mm -hmm. probably Don, though because of, of the course. twist at the end. <laughs> Well, because of the twist at the end, it's hard to say because um, it's hard to say how much of what she portrays about herself is actually what she's like. Like, yeah. the character that's portrayed in her story felt like someone I went to high school with, but like a, a more clever and more sociopathic version of that person. Um, mm -hmm. But like seeing the big twist at the end kind of puts it into this perspective where she has to be a lot smarter than the character she portrays. Because uh, I think that the character that uh, that I was reading out of Dawn, some of the stuff she would focus mm -hmm. on in her letter is, like, you have to be a fucking retard or some kind of weird autist to, like, um, like focus on these things. But then you see at the end, well, okay, if it's all for a purpose, then maybe she was doing that just to fuck with people, you know? Well, see, that it's interesting. And I, I could tell that what Mumkey was going for was, was trying to make Dawn at least in her own eyes, seem like she's the smartest dude ever and that she's got all her bases covered. But I actually made a, a, I made a list of all the ways that she is weak and has made mistakes <laughs> and all her failings. Because a categorical what I got, <laughs> spreadsheet of her thing, failings. I did. Because I have, great, I have great hope at the end of the book that Dawn is not nearly as smart as she thinks she is. And so, uh, uh, you know, just, just, I mean, the, the, if, the big question is, if yeah. the story that she wrote is like mostly true, then she definitely mm -hmm. is not as smart as she thinks she is. Well, I, I'm aware that it's entirely possible. Literally everything she wrote was a lie or right. fabricated, which I found very interesting. And I suspected that from the beginning when she insisted that everything is 100% true because nobody ever is, I don't know, uh, she's too smart to realize that she isn't coloring things with her own bias. So that stands out to me immediately as, uh as like a uh, something notable so you know at the end when she um you know when she has the big bait and switch where uh clear you know May, uh, uh truman truman probably the worst character in the book in terms of like <laughs> the, the worst person the worst person because he's just such a weak disgusting piece of shit possibly yeah. even worse than don um you know I, he's alive I, I will say he was mm -hmm. you don't really hear from him until the very end uh where mm -hmm. we which get some parts from his effective. perspective and mm -hmm. I, I loved his character once we did, just because he... Mumkey, I think, of all the characters in the story, the one that you did the best job capturing is the, like, semi-retarded beta male orbiter. <laughs> like, 
Well, <laughs> he was perfect See, as that, you know. I, I actually have some criticisms there. I thought it went a little too far. Like, the childish writing, the spelling mistakes. He seemed like he was literally retarded. That's, like, that, he just that's had the thing. no he idea. He probably is literally <laughs> retarded. Wait, isn't that the whole point of the book is that every character is literally massively retarded? Well, there are m- plenty of mental illnesses to go around, but yeah. I think only Truman descends into actual, like, well, like much, I've, much dumber than the average person. The, the thing is about this book is that all the characters mm. really did remind me of people I knew in high school, like, and him especially. Like, I like I had, like, a face I could put to that guy. Yeah, well, like, I, I, I hear, I read Truman's lines, I see Jesse Wood's face. It's just that <laughs> one-to-one, it's just a one-to-one correlation <laughs> Bam! Got him. You got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> Bury me with my money. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but that aside, uh, uh, you know, at the end, like as soon as the shit went down. Okay, so I mean, we're, we're going all over the place here. So eventually, we'll get you know, we'll probably flesh out the plot more. But at the end, after Mario uh, has has gone off to do his shooting spree, and um. Uh, and Dawn has kind of, uh, uh, she's gathered the triflers the day afterward for a meeting. Like, the way she is described, and like, this is why I don't think she, this is, I'll go through my list, but this is one of the many ways I don't think she's as smart as she as she pretends to be, or she thinks she is. Because, like, it according to her letter, the day after a school shooting, uh, uh, you know, Chow's uncle, Tao, brings home a fucking dude for them to do their evil human experiments on. Yeah. And it's like, how could he possibly think that was a good idea? And of course, it's all a cover for smuggling out Truman and, uh, and explaining how people died and not, and you know, pretending that right. it wasn't her. I mean, it's, yes, yeah, so, and explain like what yeah, happened to his body and Digi shit. Yeah, I remember Digi pointed out almost immediately when I went to his mm-hmm. house the first time, like, that's yeah. just the plot of a Serbian film. Don is clearly writing yeah. out the plot of a Serbian film, because it's even the same name oh. as the character. Yeah, it, the, the, the guy who he captures is literally the main character of a Serbian film. Like, it's the, it's literally <laughs> that character is written into her story. So she I, has, like... That's why I'm inclined to believe that that's the only part of the story that's like an outright lie because of the yeah. fact that she's basically just borrowing from a movie she saw. Like, right. you know, um, it's just so blatant that like, which which leads me to believe that, yeah, she's not as smart as she thinks she is because right. this one little chunk of story is so incongruous with everything else that sounds realistic. Right. And then this right. part just sounds completely batshit insane. And also it's named after a movie character, which surely the police could figure out before too very long. And, and you uh, know, that's totally in, co- in character with her because at the end we see that in her notes she's thinking of just naming herself after Lily, which is Mason's little sister. Yeah. So obviously she is she is just pulling names from things she knows yeah. for all kinds of stuff. So totally, totally consistent with uh, with shit that she does. Um, yeah, fuck Dawn. Uh, you know, let's just just <laughs> just for the sake of clarification. Uh, so Dawn is basically the ringleader of the Triflers, and as the story progresses, uh, I mean, she, she makes it quite clear she is a sociopath whose goal in life is to uh, not really go out of her way to hurt people, but. She, what she's going to do with her life is is perform human experimentation like the Nazis and sort of test the limits of human pain endurance and like what they'll do before they accept death and just all that kind of stuff that's not particularly useful but she is very interested in and she she spells it out quite clearly that she does not there's no moral implication to her. she doesn't give a fuck if she's hurting people she just is interested in doing so and uh, will do whatever it takes to get there so she kind of harangues the whole uh, all the triflers she, she yep. gets rid of guys like May who are a moral impediment who would stop her through uh, and th- that process of doing that was to me by far the most disturbing part of the entire book yeah but like way worse than human experimentation kind of because um I mean maybe it's just me being selfish but whole like kidnapping people uh, chopping them up making them kill themselves that kind of stuff that that almost seems cartoonish to me whereas women uh, you know false rape allegations, uh, doing the kind of things that she's done, uh, I could totally see happen, probably happen every single day, ruin innocent men's lives, and uh, terrify me to my core that it could someday happen to me. So uh, I'm totally, you should have seen me on the plane as I'm reading this book, surrounded by a grandma <laughs> and some and some some hot little number on my other side, as I'm just, my face is, I'm going, oh, 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 oh. Sitting on Sitting on the plane, raping this grandma, thinking, oh, I hope she doesn't falsely accuse me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Yeah, exactly. I mean, that part of the book had the most impact by far, not only yeah. because it felt 
more real, but also just it was such a perfect, like, because uh, the thing is, to me, at that point in the book was where I was starting to get bored, and particularly mm-hmm. of Mason, mm-hmm. because Mason's thing is that he's kind of a normie. Like, he's not Absolutely. he's not a normie normie. Um, and this is another character, again, while I don't connect with Mason personally at all, uh, I, he was another one I could put a face to from my high school years, because, like, there was always... Like that guy who hangs out with kind of the, the freaks face and of weird. Vu. <laughs> not even, not <laughs> even slightly. Normie of all. Um, and of course, Mario would be Mumkey. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I imagine Mario looking like Munchie actually. <laughs> but uh. Wait, that cut out. Looking like who? Like Munchie, but like a oh. like a short a short <laughs> well, version yeah. of Munchie. Half Mexican. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the whole thing. Um, but anyways. Mason, um, you know, I knew I knew kids in high school who kind of like hung out with the freaks and weirdos because their life wasn't really like normal. But they, it's not that they thought the same way. You know, like Mason mm-hmm. doesn't he's he's doesn't have any like mental disorders. He just has a shitty home life. So like he connects right, with these right. people who are much weirder than him because he doesn't feel normal because his home life's so shitty. But like the way he actually acts is not like these other people who are all like you know actually crazy so right but like as you go through i kind of got that point at first like learning about his home life and stuff i was like okay you know i've seen this i've seen this story before i know people who've mm-hmm. been through mm-hmm. this um but that was the point of the character yeah and then eventually there, it gets be, yeah eventually though it kind of starts to get to like okay i get mason like he because he doesn't really have a goal the way that mario and don do like he does they, by the end baby yeah well <laughs> well that's yeah. the thing like at some point i'm like okay i'm kind of sick of hearing from mason and it's right mm-hmm. as i'm I'm starting to really get sick of him that the tables turn on him and he gets written out in a big way and like the second yeah. that that thing happened where they say like the police got to pick him up i immediately flipped through the rest of the book to see if mason's name was at the top anymore and i saw <laughs> that it wasn't and i was like fuck <laughs> like you know yeah. like just that realization yeah. that his story has just ended like 75 percent of the way through the book was probably my favorite moment in the whole book just, it was by far the best. Yeah. Most disturbing. Terrifies me to my core. Uh, yeah, that's the real shit. That's the real fucking shit. audio down. Um, well, let's see here. Uh, you know, if you like, I-, I would love to go through all the reasons why I think Dawn is a piece of shit, retard, faggot <laughs> bitch. And, uh, just, by just, all means. Just dwell, okay, just dwell on that for a moment. Okay. So I wrote this down, so forgive me if I'm, if I'm just reading off my page here. Um, the content of her letter. What utility is served by Dawn sending the letter? Why would she do it? Ego and nothing more. She's still human and has weaknesses. Now, I'm aware that there are, of, the li- of the list that is composed by um, Truman, there are, there are exactly four reasons given to why she would do it. Uh, and I, I divide them into two categories. One, emotional reasons that a- add risk to her doing so and, um, and add nothing other than fulfilling her own ego and those are freeing mason and taking credit for the ricardo fire why in the fuck would dawn do something that in in any way makes her life more risky just to help mason it doesn't make sense um but but putting that aside there's also two good well, reasons I, to do okay it. Factor i thought it was mm-hmm. being implied especially through truman's dialogue at the end of the book that dawn actually mm-hmm. did like mason like, she's actually no. in love with them, nope. I thought. Unacceptable. There's no way that this... If she loved him, she... Okay, I mean, <laughs> that is unfathomable I think, to I me. Think she, Any feeling she has cannot be equated to love. I think that There's she... no li- way. I think she lied about uh, the sex being terrible and that she actually had a thing for him. Because Truman's getting... Like, Truman keeps saying how she'll get, like... He keeps saying, like, oh, she's getting way into writing about him or, like, that she's ignoring Truman and stuff. Like, Truman, who she's obviously using and doesn't give a fuck about. Well, 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 here's where where the black pills come out because love isn't a real thing, especially What does that have anything to do with with – it's you're saying that she likes him. What yeah. does it mean to like someone? To be willing to frame them for rape of you or her little sister or his little she sister needed, and send them to jail? She needed to do that to get to get out of what she like. She needed to get him out of the way, but that's then she still not, cares about him enough to free him. Like um, that, that seemed that's obvious to me. Mumkey, do you want to pitch I, in on this? Do you have an opinion? I thought the implication. I, I mean, was, of course, I do have an opinion because I know what happens, but. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like to answer questions in terms of uh, people trying to, like, translate the book or, or interpretations yeah. because, I mean, it ruins people's interpretations. So I'd, I'd rather sit out on that one. That's fair. 
Well, okay. I guess we'll just have to have a disagreement there. Hey, was but it, I don't was see either how you of those an interpretation claim. that you had not even thought of, though? Like, is the possibility that Don is in love with him intentionally written into the book as a possibility? Even I'll concede there's a possibility. I just find it ridiculous. Well, because I think a, a lot of the last part of the book is clearly throwing in lots and lots of implications so that you can come to different conclusions, but without it being ever, you know, like how much of the story is a lie, how much of this and that. There's deliberately mm -hmm. no answer, but there's lots and lots of implications that could drag you in different directions. And I just thought there was a lot of implications suggesting, especially in what Truman was saying about Don writing the letter, that she is in love with Mason and won't admit it because she's too proud. What? Okay, here's the thing though. I literally don't care about the answer to that question. <laughs> whatever her whatever her feelings are, I we're we're done with her feelings. Her feelings don't matter anymore. Not interested. She has done these things. I'm just trying to explain to that this die. is why. I mean, I'm not saying it was a good idea for her to This is why what? This is why what? Well, what what's the relevance here? What's the relevance? I'm saying this, this is why she incriminated herself. It's not that it was a good idea to do so, but she okay, you wanted to get him off that, the hook cuz they're already after her. Like one that's, way or that's another. Fine. She's outed as the bad guy, but so why not just stack the extra allegations on herself while and let Jason skate if she like the Mason skate if she likes him? Well, that's you know? fine, but she has now she has now unleashed what she must have known would be at the very least a vindictive agent, someone who is not going to be too thrilled about the shit that just went down. I don't think that was she's, all her fault. I don't think she's smart enough to realize that he would like become a fucking vigilante yeah. hero <laughs> exactly. man. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe. But that see, that's exactly what I wanted to get to. In this way, Dawn has shown that she is weak, and that she has yeah. flaws, and that she's not an impenetrable, logical fortress. I mean, that's obvious. She has these kind of flaws. It, and I just, it just gives me hope. It just makes me happy about the ending, because we've got, I forget what the guy's name was, uh, Grimes, uh, the crime guy. Oh, well, that's uh, the, uh, the, the true hero of the book, the only character who I found remotely relatable, uh, Special Agent mm -hmm. Ron Clacker, the, the great... Clacker. He's, he's, there to, he's there to bring justice to the world. So he has a... He has a Lust right. for justice, he's gonna take her down. In the sequel, written by me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I actually uh, see, would kind of love a trifler <laughs> sequel written by Jesse about like Mason and that agent trying to take down Don. He teams up with we Truman Sinclair, who was the real mastermind all along. He was he was <laughs> playing that bitch for a fool the whole time. Now he's just you know he he's just using her. Now he's got this hot blonde yeah. girlfriend. He just wanted her to be blonde the whole book. That was his whole plan. And that he, was the gambit. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's portraying himself like a humble beta orbiter, but in truth he's the fucking Omega male. It's all wow. part of his his Machiavellian <laughs> schemes to to slam yeah. that puss. <laughs> When a beta goes that beta, it goes all the way to Omega. His power circles around and becomes infinite. My god, yes. It's kind of like retard strength, only socially applied. Yeah, same, same kind of shit there. Oh my um, god. Yeah, so, so I read the ending as... Uh, I mean, personally, I don't feel I need a sequel at all. Because in my mind... I now know that, um, I mean, it was, it was clear all along, but I know that Dawn has flaws and that there are two hot male heroes on the case <laughs> to take down this weak, cowardly woman. And if Ronda Rousey can't take Jesse, then we know, then we know that Don cannot handle oh, these two men. Dude, two men. I, I would kick Don Bracken's ass. She's like a 15-year-old girl. <laughs> I'd throw her in the fucking toilet. <laughs> So yeah, uh, like, I mean, my impression uh -huh. of Dawn throughout the story is that the way she's meant to be is just extremely pretentious. Like, she really sure. thinks she's hot shit, but it's constantly evidenced that she is not. Um, not just in her actions, which are petty and retarded. Like, because mm -hmm. she's a fucking mm -hmm. teenager, and she acts like a teenager. The things that she thinks are, like, a big deal are just not. Like swearing. She's know? so obsessed with no oh, swearing. God, and her, I knew know? girls like that in high school. I knew people yep. who were like, yeah. uh, swearing is for, um, you know, uneducated people and stuff like that. Like, I know that kind of pretentious bitch, and, like, uh, she totally reminded me of that. So, like, the whole book, I always saw her as, like, this grating, pretentious asshole who was just – who thought she was hot shit. And the only reason that she succeeds is that everyone around her is even more retarded, you know? That's right. But, like, that's right. In that moment when she, like, meets the detectives, you, you definitely have this sense of, like, these people are fucking adults, and they're way beyond her, and they are going to, you know, like – 
Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's going to be a way they can get her. I mean, which is the end of the book mm-hmm. doesn't really leave her with much prospect of like winning this one. You know, like she's yeah, she's got all these things she's trying to do while she's on the escape, but none of it is very convincing that it's going to work out for much longer. Like you know, mm-hmm. they they've figured out who she is. They're going to chase her down. It can't be that hard. To, to catch this girl who has no fucking idea what she's doing. She thinks she does, but she's a fucking idiot. And that's so. that's what I love so much about her. The fact that she... Okay, so uh, again, just, just to go back on that, because I love shitting on this fucking bitch, uh, <laughs> as I'm sure everyone does. She just she just represents everything evil. I mean, uh, forgive me for getting a little red-pilled here, but she's like evil femininity at its worst, or at least she uses the tools at her disposal, particularly with Mason, particularly with Mason and manipulating Truman and, uh, and you know, the, 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 the whole thing. The fucking thing there um but like the way that she so cataclysmically does not understand mario that and like does not know that one of her pawns is about to go commit a fucking school yeah. shooting tomorrow like and that's how you know bitch. she because the thing is she she sees herself as in control but she does this right. thing this and this i can relate to because i kind of do the same thing which is that when <laughs> things uh don't go your way at all you just reframe it as though exactly you know and she but she does that so much that it's obvious that she doesn't really have any control like you know she she finds mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. that mario's doing the thing she's like oh well um you know well okay that's fine i can plan uh it's actually like this oh no actually this all works out no this is fine this is exactly what i had in mind uh this is okay you know but like Mm -hmm. the reality is that her plans are completely fucked and that she's getting foiled left and right and having to change everything and i mean you know you can do that for some time but how long before you know it just pulls the, the rug gets pulled out from under this, her this bitch can't. didn't even think to th- she she was so fucking dense she didn't even realize that joe was in the restaurant before the thing got burned down didn't have any idea that there was a possibility that somebody would be there and that's just one of her many many mistakes along the way and uh yeah, she doesn't know what the fuck's well, going on. you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, what a monster Dawn is, but we're not mm-hmm. talking about, you know, the other actual monster in the book who actually committed the shooting, uh, Mario, yeah. who is just as much, mm-hmm. if not more, of a retarded faggot and represents yeah. everything wrong with the entire world all at once. He, he's, think- a, he's a stupid... Like uncreative, unoriginal. He, he yeah. only speaks in like in like four chan copy pastas, which true. <laughs> I'm not sure. It, it just he just he, just, he speaks in monkey videos. Is uh, what, what I'm trying to well, say. Well, two of my, in, in a nice two of my way, videos are just direct. Yeah, pulled from I, I, I recognized a, a few t- passages of just being your videos. Well, you know, if we're if we're segueing from Don to he, Mario, he's basically uh, a Monkey Jones yeah. fan, is what he is. He's <laughs> Monkey's entire fan base in one <laughs> wretched body. Well, you know, the the thing is, the, even though I'm fascinated by Don, the the great thing about that is, is that, uh, and this is kind of the the reason I even wanted to do this, and I was tweeting about this before as I was reading like the first half. Um, Don is pure evil and is basically irredeemable by her own account. You know, maybe she could be, maybe she's, you know, was talking herself up. She's not actually such a sociopath, but according to her account, she she's not changing anytime soon. She is a constant evil force. Mario, on the other hand, that's something that we can do something about. Mario is someone who mm-hmm. could have been saved by society. And uh, I don't and, know and if that's I what agree. it. it well, stick with me. I, I'm just saying that uh, all the so Dawn frames herself as like. So at the end of the book, she talks about how uh, there's a passage about how what were the triflers? What makes a trifler a trifler? And she thinks about oh, were they all lonely? Uh, do they all have the same fascination with the macabre? No, it wasn't any of those things. It's just that they were manipulable by me, and I agree that that was the real problem here. These people had so- psychological vulnerabilities that she exploited, and so the way we can help that, and and we can talk about Mario specifically because he's obviously the biggest one. Um, though Truman's no uh, Truman's no spring chicken either. He's a bit of a murderer himself. Um, uh, yeah, like, that's what opened them up to this shit, to being able to be manipulated by things that we cannot change. We cannot change what's going on inside Dawn's head. She's always going to be evil, but we can help with guys like Mario, and if he just had had some fucking friends, he wouldn't have done this shit. Uh, and you know, it, like, I rewatched Monkey's, um, uh, Elliot Roger. Notice I didn't say Rogers. Yeah. Elliot Roger, I'm learning. I'm getting better. Um, I watched that video beforehand, and uh, the 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 it was the two questions that he brought up at the beginning of that. Um, why did this happen, and how can we prevent it in the future? 
Yes, that's pretty much what was running through my mind the whole time thinking well, about I Mario. Mean, obviously, well, Mario that's... is based on Elliot Roger, and of so, course, you know this. The parallel is obvious. What were you saying, Jesse? Well, like the I mean, Mario doesn't have any real problems. All of his all of his sadness and depression comes from the fact that he is an obnoxious little spurg idiot shit retarded butt boy who can't make any friends because he sucks. That's no one else's True. fault. I mean, I think it's um, unrealistic to say like, how do we help these people? Oh, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta find the the weird little depressed people who are mean to everyone and who suck, and just be friends with them so they'll be better. That's ridiculous. Some people just suck and they're evil. Well, even if the answer is that we can't do anything about it until we have some sort of, I don't know, brain scanning psychopath technology, and then we can know ahead of time what people are gonna do. Even I, I would just like to know if there's anything we can do. And I've been, and you know, you're you're right, you're right, because uh, especially the way Don frames it, and I, I love the way in this book, the way um, there are different accountings of different events, and that the way like Don, I, I love how Mario goes into detail about like all the conversations he had with Don about like oh how I want to like massacre everyone in the school, and Don was totally like yeah I want to fucking uh, you know hang them up by meat hooks and carve out their innards or whatever it was, but Don leaves that out of her story entirely, yeah. clearly framing herself as like oh I would never delve into that kind of like bullshit I, I fucking love that that's that's yeah, that's really she's great she's a pretentious bitch and mario's on exactly. mario has no reason to be he's completely but mario honest. is just as pretentious mm -hmm. and deluded i mean he has these fantasies that he's going to kill a bunch of people and all the betas will be alphas now and no one oh, will ever yeah. be depressed again he's going to create a <laughs> utopia i mean like where do you even start with what could fix that nothing can fix that that's a no. that's a deep fucked up idiot delusion yeah, well, that's what I. You're not wrong. Personally, like Mario's parts are my favorite parts of the book because and like what what could have caused like nothing causes something like that. That's just there's something yeah. fucking wrong with you. Go to you belong in the trash. Yeah, I we that's not good enough. Damn it, that's it not is good, good enough. enough. I ca I kind of a uh, I kind of agree with Jesse because like we wouldn't know like a guy like this. It's. Like like Jesse just said, we can't just like find a depressed guy you know, and be yeah, like, "Oh, I mean, I'm like, gonna be your best we've, friend we, now." We've and invented like, antidepressants, and you can debate about you know the ethics or the value of antidepressants, but they don't make an antidepressant for stupid. There's no anti-stupid. Look, look, look. It's but, like, but, but he clearly illustrates several several points in the story where I mean, we're we're just going from his words here, obviously. But there were ways that things could get better. Mario right. was well, never no, even it, on medicine at any that's point. That's fine, Nate. There's ways that things could have gone differently, but mm. no one could ever possibly recognize that. Like, there's no That's way you true. could know. The, when the doctor in the when Mario talks about how the doctor just blew him off and didn't take him seriously and said just go talk to your general practitioner, or whatever. Yes, Mario okay, should yeah. have followed well, up with I that. Forgot but about that there were there were moments where things could have gone differently if the system was more. You know, like I mean, the system's uh, always imperfect, and that's the the problem well, that, with you, all this stuff is that they try to fix them. Yeah, well, but the, the the thing is, the problem isn't that nobody helped Mario. The problem is that the system itself needs fixing. Like, it's not that he needed fixing; it's that the system needs fixing. It's that you need to have the doctors not be shit, you know, and stuff like that. I agree. And so, yeah, but um, personally, reading Mario's parts, and this is. My my biggest criticism of this book, and this is something I uh, I told to Mumkey, but I tried to avoid talking about it online so it wouldn't color anyone's mm. perception who hasn't read it yet, um, is just the fact that it slips into self awareness sometimes in ways that I think work against the characters because with Mario. Sometimes he reads like a parody of a school shooter, and sometimes he reads like a school shooter. And so even though that makes this part of the book hilarious at times, um, it also kind of deflates parts of it where uh, there's moments I love. Like, okay, when he goes on and on about how Death Note inspired him, that was like the perfect combination of hilarious and also totally I can see it. But then there's sure, other times right, right. where he goes on a rant that, yeah, does sound too much like like a monkey video, but I know monkey videos, when I watch them, I can tell it's self-aware and it's not a fucking school shooter writing it. So when he is able to have that level of, like, cleverness or to tell a funny joke, I think, well, Elliot Roger couldn't tell a funny joke. 
You know, Elliot Rogers fucking retarded. His book reads like an, an insane person wrote it. You know, Mario sometimes seems retarded. Sometimes he seems too clever. And so when it comes down to the end where he just fucks everything up and dies, it's like this should have been a more retarded character, I think. You know? Mm, I mean, I see what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree. Uh, yeah, th there were times where I, I thought... I don't think uh, anybody, yeah, where it was a little bit harder. I don't to, think anybody mm -hmm. who commits a school shooting is a funny guy, because funny people have friends, and it won't happen. That what if, well, but that's that's part of the but that's part of the what, delusion. What if the Joker out. committed a school friends. shooting? <laughs> the Joker, yeah, I'd be all smiles. I don't know if the Joker is actually a funny guy. Like, has the Joker <laughs> ever actually said like a joke that makes you laugh? Well, okay. I thought the joke I would, is I would that what a, he I would finds put Mark funny Hamill is. and Cesar Romero in the funny category of jokers. But now right. we're getting off on a tangent about which jokers they <laughs> rating yeah. the well, funniness I, of I jokers. Just, I, I feel that like the point of the Joker is not so much that he's funny to other people, but that what he himself finds to be funny is, you know, uh terrorism, I guess, whatever he does. What what is he considered? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I the Joker is just a terrorist. I mean in the yeah. animated series he's a crime lord. But he's also a and terrorist. a mass murderer, yeah. yeah. All those things, all those good things. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, that's fair. That's fair. You know, I'm I'm pretty good at just diving into something, and this is probably a negative on myself as like a critic. Uh, I'm pretty easily able to get absorbed in worlds I'm reading. So there there yeah. weren't many times where I I had difficulty separating like I the just, monkey well, writing I think it from I think the character. The reason I felt this way is because I felt so mm -hmm. strongly that these characters reminded me of people that I've known before mm -hmm. that like when they did something that was incongruous with that then it would it would take me out of it a little like with with Dawn because she's so pretentious and so up her own ass and focuses mm -hmm. on so many weird details in her story there were times where I thought she was too clever as well where like she does something that I'm like okay I don't believe that the person who thought that explaining every fucking detail of her work shift at the stupid goddamn ice cream place was necessary is also clever enough to write this other sentence you know it's like can I like like mm -hmm. like monkey himself is better at English and in creative writing than the characters that he's portraying even though he sometimes is trying to portray the story like Sometimes he tries to write like a retard, and sometimes he writes clever, and the two can compete, is what I mean to say. You know, I, I, the only time I really felt like that was with Truman. I mean, unless I never got the sense this character was actually retarded. I, so I that definitely took me for a loop. got the sense that um that that Mumkey had stumbled upon a great scheme of making his book impossible to criticize because it's written from mm -hmm. the perspective of three terrible writers. Yeah. True. True. And, but that's and again that's what I mean when I say that sometimes the writing was too good like is it it's it's just inconsistent where sometimes it's like it's clever and funny and it feels like a dark comedy which is how it kind of builds itself and then at other times it feels like you're just looking into the like when again when Dawn goes into like everything about her work routine it was so fucking unnecessary and I thought that part of the book was completely boring because it it's not, um, it's not funny, it's not really relevant, she's just going on and on about everything they do, but it does get you kind of more into, the, like, I, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, this is what a fucking 16-year-old would write, though. Like, she would think that this is all necessary, because I've read lots of stuff written by teenagers, because people, teenagers constantly submit to me their work for my review, and mm -hmm. uh, it's always full of unnecessary bullshit information. So reading a part like that, was more boring as a story, but better as this is something a dumbass 16 year old pretentious bitch would write. Whereas other parts where it's like really, you know, there's like a clever twist and there's like a just right timed piece of dialogue or something that's really funny. I'm like, okay, that was great. Oh, what was the one? I wanted to make them look like you. Oh, got him. Fuck wheelchair people. Oh that yeah, was, uh, yeah. That whole big that dramatic was, twist part. Like, that was well, um, that was. Just, I died inside reading that. <laughs> I wanted to die. I definitely uh, felt. I like how he put her on the school shooting list. By the way, like she did anything fucking wrong. Fuck you, Mario. You piece of shit. <laughs> All right. What did Marissa do? What did she do? She did nothing. She did nothing wrong. You're the bad person. Okay. All right. Go on. Yeah. Jesse. <laughs> I definitely. Um. I felt far more disturbed. I guess you'd say with Mario's chapters than with Dawn's chapters because um, actual psychopaths like Dawn yeah, mm -hmm. they drop something actual psychopaths like Dawn are you know pretty far and 
few and far between, and they're right. not as smart as they think they are, and they usually get caught. But people like Mario are fucking everywhere. Um, <laughs> he is every 4 chan yeah. in the world. He's every internet commenter in the world and every Redditor in the world. They're all over the place. They're all too stupid and deluded to know how evil they are and how malicious they are. And mm. they're the real problem. We need to take them out. We need to put them in a fucking meat grinder, just like, you know, Mondo Burger. You mess with Kurt, you go in the grinder. That's what I say to him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is Mondo Burger? What are you talking about? Is Mondo that, is Burger that the prequel is the, to Good Burger? Yeah, it's the evil it is, fast right? food chain in Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. I haven't um, seen hey, Good Burger we, in 15 years. <laughs> can, can we just talk real quickly about, do you think it is, I, I was just wondering about this, so nobody at any point ever like provided evidence uh, besides Dawn's written word that there was actual like human experimentation that happened in that basement with like the first guy. We know the second guy was fake, obviously, but the first guy, I found myself reevaluating whether or not that was even true. And if so, because this goes into like why uh, she even wrote this letter, like why give them all this material to like look into the fact that, yes, I am a super uh, well, uh, psychopathic monster. I want you to know about the fact that I've committed these atrocities. Like what what good is served by that other than just ego? If it's just ego, we can just write it well, off. Well, that part is ego. corroborated by Mario's part. I mean, a lot of what Don says is can be called true because it's yeah mario in other did say that they started well. doing are you sure that. he said something about that yeah yeah the uh, the fbi well, agent brings it up he says mario uh, says he was responsible for two deaths and blue bitty blue yeah oh shit that was two deaths ah oh, fuck okay yeah well, i fucked that up incidentally i wonder about if how why the fuck did she tell anyone though how it many of been, uh how many well, of the 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 kids' videos had you guys seen because i'd seen one man one jar before so that was a that was another interesting aspect of the yeah. story is they, how uh, much of it is just mm -hmm. real. Like, well, sometimes you, it, it, it's interesting because some of them monkey made up and some of them are real videos. So, yeah. um, and it's because I've seen some of the real videos that it actually enhanced how disturbing the made up ones were because like. Because I can't tell. I can't tell how many are things I just haven't seen before. So as I was mm -hmm. reading this book, probably the part that, f like, disturbed me the most was just Monkey describing videotapes that the characters were watching. Cause, that was extremely disturbing. Yeah, because he'd always sure. go in depth. And, again, I could never tell which ones are real and which ones aren't because there were so mm -hmm. many, or at least a few, that I knew were real that I had seen. Like One Man, One Jar, which is the one where the guy puts a jar up his ass and it breaks and he has to pull all the shards out. Um fucking disgusting yes. video uh but like i've not seen that one thank yeah it, it, it's it's on like porn sites but yeah it's uh, it, like just just knowing that that was real and then thinking about like okay well mm. if that oh, one's God, real then maybe guys, this my, one's my, my real. mom just showed up with a bunch of food and, and, and drinks you know what what a, what a bitch i i'm so sick of her <laughs> one of these days i'm gonna kill her and i'm gonna kill the whole world too and make it a a better place for podcasters like me that one moment where, where Don uh, describes, you know, uh, uh, Mario's mom as just being such a nice lady that one time really, really added a lot to when Mario just shows up to school with, like, her fucking blood all over his hands. What did she do, Mario? Did she deserve that? Is this justice? Guess so. Casualties of war, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of funny that Jesse made that joke because Jesse does actually complain about his mom all the time. <laughs> and I have met his mom and she's an extremely sweet woman. So <laughs> like That's why he hates Mario. Hit too close to home, eh, Jesse? <laughs> oh boy. Like I remember when you told me or you were on a, some stream and you were saying that um that uh that that boozy floozy was like friends with your mom and i was like huh i always thought jesse's like i imagined your mom as like i don't know like a total bitch or something and then i met her and i was like oh she's just like a midwestern house mom she's just a mom yeah <laughs> like, oh. my mom is a saint and i always feel bad when i complain about her but you know. <laughs> yeah well, that's good. You see, Shout you can recognize the mom. Shout out and, to Jesse's mom! Yeah! And Jesse's whole yeah. household. It was nice. I stayed there for a week. Had a good time. Aside from the shit rot that I caught <laughs> in, the, uh, in the basement. <laughs> Baby Groot. <laughs> uh, Baby Groot. <laughs> Let's talk about the real hero of this book, Baby Groot, as he is yeah. the real hero of every book <laughs> ever written. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's going to be a central character in my sequel. It's going to be a buddy cop movie with uh, Special Agent Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks and Baby Groot, and they're going to take down Dawn. <laughs> yeah. They're going to trap her in the Black Lodge where she belongs. Oh, i got, I got to watch the new Twin Peaks. I just remembered about that. Uh, apparently it's mm. shit. 
So. Oh, what? no. I, mm, have you been watching it, Jess? I have been watching it. Okay. Well, they, Victor was just telling me that he just marathoned all of the original and then it's the new very, shows. It's very, very slow and very methodical. And they're really yeah. taking their sweet time with everything that you want to see. But I wouldn't call it bad. Oh, like, Victor the, people on the, right. the people on the Twin Peaks Reddit board are all, of course, kissing every episode's ass and calling mm-hmm. him a genius. I'm not, like... I can see where they're coming from. I can also see where people would say it's boring, but I don't know. I'm invested. I like it. To be I'm fair, to be fair, regardless. I thought that the original series has a lot of moments where it drags and gets pretty boring. I thought shitty. so too. Victor yeah. said he just like completely loved the entire like, thing. Like both to me, the seasons. Whole, to all me, the, the whole, whole franchise is something that you just like you stick through the bad parts because the good parts have enough charm yeah. to make up for it. All right. Well, now we're reviewing Except Twin like Peaks. That. Well, uh, yeah. Now we're on the Twin Peaks all right, podcast. We're, we're off. All right. We're off that now. We're off that now. Uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about Mason, just just to see what we can get out of uh, the character of Mason. So it was interesting to me that you said, did you, that you couldn't really relate to the guy. Because to me, he was painted to be basically the normal everyman. Well, and... I'm not a normal everyman, am I? So <laughs> Well, I wouldn't really consider myself to be one either, but just as like a moral agent. You know, you know what's interesting, actually? I, would, I, would, I, I actually love the character of Dawn, because Dawn is exactly the opposite of me. Because while she is an amoral, uh, unfeeling psychopath wanting to hurt and kill people, I am an amoral, unfeeling psychopath whose only desire is to make the world better for everyone. (laughs) That is what I am. This is my... I I don't give a fuck who I have to crush on my way to make their life great. I will do it. (laughs) And I will will take hostages. I'll do whatever's necessary to make the world better for everybody. And um, so... and, And, you know, Mason just has like the... Maybe it's just that my connection to him as like this guy being, you know, strung along by Don. I don't know, dude. This, this shit really gets to me. Any of this kind of shit about an innocent guy just being. I, I know I'm going to go we off the get it. You're here. a red pill MGTOW, Nate. We understand. That's it. I. I, I have such deep fear of the of the real power that women have socially over men, and it, it haunts me. It haunts me all the time. It doesn't. Uh, you know why it doesn't haunt me? <laughs> Because, because I'm not a rapist. Well, that <laughs> and- no, was he a rapist? Was he a rapist, Jesse? Yeah, lock him up. Here's an accusation. No I actual don't... proof. What's that? A bunch of hearsay? Throw him away. Fucking lock him up. I they just fuck. What do you I mean no proof? There was a little girl with cum all over her. That's proof. That, that doesn't was... matter if it's true or not. It's still proof. She 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 literally could have gone into the bathroom after he jacked off and rubbed it on herself. There was no proof that he actually Who did anything. Who would ever no... do that? That's ridiculous. That would oh, never so happen. It's, it would never happen. It would never never happened oh, incidentally by far my favorite thing that happens in the book is uh is no, lily rubbing okay. cum all over herself let's let's talk about that Fucking for a second this, that's a shitty meme that's a shitty meme look it, the incident is fine uh it's it's cool that people bring up that as like an an, an interesting outstanding moment uh, it's like just me thing. it's just me who brings it up all the time because it's by well, far my, what i consider to maybe me, it is just you i mean when mm-hmm. i sell the book to people i tell them there's an 11 year old rubbing cum on herself Okay, uh, see, a, a thousand times more interesting to me than that is just the fact that a man is being destroyed for having done nothing wrong. Well, sure, and being that's the evil. Emo- that's the emotional content of the book. That's not the that's selling. That's the intellectual well, content. Um, Rubbing cum on your body is not intellectually interesting. You know, it's viscerally interesting. I don't know if yeah, I agree that's how you sell that. Uh, I don't know if I agree I that so. Mason is totally innocent or totally like a nice guy, not bad how at so. all. I mean, he's not. He's not as evil as the other two, but he's pretty annoying. Yeah, and he's complicit in a lot of... <laughs> Which he, is... His, his, lock his, him up. Lock he's him a up. dumb his teenager. Desire, he's pretty cringy. Yeah, his desire to fuck Don does make him complicit in a lot of bad activity. What the fuck are you even talking about? It's clearly painted in the story that everything he okay, did... I mean, yes, it makes Mason, him take her words as jokes. The fact he thinks that, that Mason they're jokes. That's true. participates in the triflers at all... Makes him a fucking retard. Like, all right, you personally have admitted to watching that sh- that that clip of the guy no, in the I, ass. I, 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 are only, you are you first fucked of all, up too? Are you as evil um, as Truman? Nate, I mean, Mason, I never said what? I wanted to watch that video or that I enjoyed it in any way. In fact, oh, it but horrified you were just and disgusted along by society. I guess. No, you no, know, my fucking ex girlfriend with this point. To me randomly I think that and, uh, if you're too stupid to notice that the people you're hanging out with are weird, gross, grimy, greasy pieces of shit. Then you're probably just as bad. Yeah, I mean, like he. God, why do I keep having to turn down my audio? Look, he got played. He, he, I, I will fully admit he's weak. I mean, I mean he's yeah, definitely he's a, weak. He's just, you're not. You're not evil, but being a certain level of stupid to me is 
complicit in evil. I just I think mean, I, I think Mason uh, it turned a blind eye to a lot of things because of the fact that he wanted to fuck Don. I think there's a lot of shit he could have recognized. He could have seen where things were going, but he let himself be blinded because all he cared about was how badly he liked this okay, girl. Okay. And it's because there's... it was an escape from how shit his life is. You know, his he hates his dad. He's trying to get out of the house. He's, you know, trying to finish school. And all he's thinking about is, like, this sort of fantasy, this escapism that he gets from imagining that he's going to get to fuck this girl, you know, and hoping that she'll like him. And, like, that, it's an escape from his life, but it's allowed him to turn a blind eye to all the bullshit going on in the triflers you know oh yeah it's not like he had any desire to like move away and save his little sister he only cared about fucking this girl he, you guys are totally well, blown I, up I, where the, the fuck did character. i say any why do you keep putting words in you my mouth you just paid it that you just when paid did it I that ever way say, like that was his only concern when did i say that i did not say you that say, i said that, that he's that so was the in- worried about it he's so concerned about it i didn't say it's the only thing he's thinking about i said mm-hmm. that he is blinded mm-hmm. because his life is shit and he can't okay. do anything about it so he's obsessed with this girl and he's thinking about her all the time and it's uh, he's turning a blind eye to all the bullshit just because he can't stop you know he's He's doing it because he can't get away. He can't escape yet. He wants to, but he can't. So he needs something to keep him fucking sane. And that thing is obsessing over this girl. But he should recognize at some point that, A, Don is a piece of shit who doesn't give a fuck about him. And that should have been obvious from the beginning. He should have recognized that all of her friends are pieces of shit. That the kind of videos they were watching is fucked up. I mean, this guy does is not into this stuff. He admits himself, right, right. you know, he doesn't find these videos interesting. He's concerned about about these people, but just because he wants to fuck Don so badly, he'll just go along with all of it. Just keep saying yes. And that's a dangerous kind of thing that totally well, happens, you know? The going along with it is you just continue to show up to meetings and watch stuff. It's not like he ever agreed. Like, because that's the whole thing. He had to go because he was too good. Because he would have stopped because he has a moral compass, whereas right. the others are, you know, well, you too know, weak. I, uh, I found uh, Mason's a lot of Mason's chapters to be pretty uncomfortable and particularly cringy because mm-hmm. I could relate to them. They did remind me of stuff that I said back when I was in high school, like the parts yeah. where he's talking about, mm-hmm. you know, his girlfriend and Don and, like, you know, trying to, like, scheme his right, way, yeah. you know, out of one relationship. Into it really reminded me of, like, the way I used to think about girls all the time when I was in high school. So that was really cringy of me because, you know, relating to it doesn't make me not able to see that it's fucked up and evil and stupid, just like the other two's behavior. Um, I... What? Uh, well, stop! Stop! It's like you're putting him on the same level as the other people. I'm all not! Did... I'm not! Well, you okay. fucking... We're, we're right. talking about... Look, let's put him on a scale, all right? I'm you called him I'm, evil. I'm, I'm, I'm complimenting evil, Monkey's writing, you clod, by saying that fucking all the characters were equally uncomfortable, which I think was the intent for different reasons. And and Nate, you you, you got to understand. This is like saying, you know, you got you got a uh, you got Dawn. She's like Arrow Manga Sensei level bad, right? And you got Mario <laughs> Quintanilla, and he's like the Asterisk War bad. And then you've got you've got mm-hmm. Mason, and he's like Re Zero bad. You know, he, they're he's all Re Zero bad. bad. But they're they're just he's a sky you know, whale of a human being. I, I, a sky I, whale <laughs> masquerading as a man. I legitimately think it's unfair to call Mason a bad person. I don't. I'm think not calling him a bad person. I'm just saying that he's a little complicit and not totally innocent, and that I yeah. think that he's an annoying teenager. Which you yeah. know, fuck and teenagers. And he's boring, which is the worst thing that a person can be. <laughs> look, look. I, I just want to be like, if you're saying that he's guilty, I, I, then I, I think question, you'd have to say that. Like, I question yeah. whether. I think he. I question whether he's also a sociopath, like Mario. And Don, I mean, you could almost call the book two sociopaths and a psychopath. I think I think Don is the psycho, but I, but I, you know, Mario's obviously a sociopath. I, I, you know, I wonder if he really gives a shit about anyone but himself because all of his writing and everything, his narration is all very focused on himself. What how how are things going to turn out well for him? He doesn't really. He's a go teenager, into... dude. He's fifteen. Exactly. He's 15. All teenagers yeah, he's like, like sociopaths. 18, isn't he? Yeah. Oh wait, he's he's a he's a he's a. Yeah, yeah he's a, I, I question senior. whether he really even cares about his sister, or whether he's just you know he wants to help her to feel better about himself or something. Because yeah. he, he the way he dude, talks he about his girlfriend, he obviously his doesn't dad. give a shit about his girlfriend. He he doesn't uh, really right. give a shit in, about Dawn in, other than enough. he's infatuated with her because he wants to fuck her. He wants to slam that puss. 
It's ridiculous to say he doesn't care about his sister. He would literally antagonize his dad so that he would beat him instead of the sister. I How just, can you argue that he doesn't I'm care about I'm not arguing it? he doesn't. I'm just saying I you wonder. You just I'm said saying it, I it. wonder. I'm being well, contemplative. Well, here's some proof to the contrary. All right, fine. I, I disagree. And, 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 and for what it's worth, the second that Lily did something... Of her own accord, that that yep. that he, you know, he completely plan, turns on her like he, that. Uh, yeah, as soon as she takes those like, naked pictures, that he starts bitch, sounding you know? exactly like Mario. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was mad at her, and then he got over it. The next entry, what a bad person Not to be mad Nate, at why someone. Why do you keep blowing this way out of proportion? Nobody's saying he's you're a bad getting, guy. We're you're saying, saying that, that he turned on her like that's some sort of like he yeah, he that's irredeemably not a good broke thing. off all ties. No one said it was irredeemable, you motherfucker. Yeah, it's normal. Normal people suck. Normal people are horrible. It's normal for people to be shit half the time, Look, half what, of their lives. What, 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 are, what, what context are we coming at this from? From having normal human expectations for characters or expecting them all to be literally perfect paradise I'm just of saying, goodness? I'm just saying. I'm going for a normal look, person look, here. Worse things happen to Mason than he deserved, but he's not a great guy. He's just a shitty teenager like every other one you knew in high school. He's no... Look, Mario and Don are worse than anybody I've ever known. Yes. Nobody I... Well, okay, that's not fair because I knew a school shooter. So Mario's <laughs> as bad as the worst guy I've ever known, and Don's maybe a little bit worse. But Mason is just like all, a lot of kids I knew in high school who were just fucking dumb burnout kids who didn't know what the, their lives sucked so they had no plans and they just fucked around and they made a lot of bad decisions he didn't deserve to have the things happen to him that did but he's not a good guy he's not someone you root for he's just kind of a shitty little teenager who gets a lot worse than he deserves you know but like at no point was i like yeah mason you go until the very end where he gets like a yeah. and, and it's only because <laughs> where he becomes the punisher <laughs> yeah it's only because like, so severe of stuff happens to him that, yeah, he basically has, like, a superhero backstory now, and now he's interesting at the very end. But, like, throughout the book, he's fucking completely lame, and that's kind of the point. That's why it's actually kind of cathartic when all the bad shit happens to him, because it's like, oh, thank God, we wrote out the boring guy, and now we get to focus on the cool characters for a while, you know? Like, fuck Mason. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. No, I, I don't well, uh, agree with I, you at I, all. I, I, I disagree that his chapters are boring. I think they were, you know, just as interesting as the other two characters. I think they get boring. I thought they were interesting at first, but eventually I just but uh, but uh, but like I do I definitely think uh, fuck him. Yeah. When he writes, when he confesses in in his entry, I mean, of course, of course, he's the normie. Of course, he's got the least interesting thing. His, uh, you know, it's not like his problems weren't the worst. His problems actually were the worst of any character, That's and true. yet he puts that up with fair. it the yes. most. He is the best person despite having the worst situation. You know what, Nate? But then you've swayed me. What? I agree. With <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that's objectively true. I mean, again, and, uh, like, uh, it's just that his problems are all real stuff that uh, most of the people I know have gone through. And, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't... It uh, Most people don't go through... Uh, most people who are in that situation don't then get put into a far worse one like he does. And most people sure. don't become a vigilante superhero at the end of their story. <laughs> um, but, you know... He becomes handcuffed. Mason's, Mason's Will Smith. <laughs> Mason's problems were stuff that I was like, okay, yeah, this is what most of my friends were going through in high school. They had shitty home situations. They, I mean, I hung out with a bunch of fucking, uh, you know, like potheads and stuff who were just trying to do anything to get away from the house because their lives fucking blew. You know, they had shitty parents who didn't know how to take care of them because they had kids when they weren't ready and they lived in the ghetto. Like, that was a lot mm -hmm. of my friends. So Mason, to me, was like, yeah, I know this guy. I know this story, but he's not my friend, so I don't care about him the way I care about my friends, Look, I, you know? I agree. He had the least interesting things to say up to when things turned. But the, the point of the character is that he represents normalcy. Yeah. And of course, Relative that's not going normalcy. to be fascinating. Relative normalcy. So I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. But to say that he's like, well, uh, I mean, okay, we, we already talked about like if he's complicit. And yes, I will 100% agree. His, his, his own idiocy, because, you know, everyone's idiotic to a degree if they couldn't see what was going on here. Uh, obviously, shot him in the back. But like, like, the, the impetus, I mean, obviously, if you're dividing this up by percentages, I'm just saying he's got to be, like, tiny compared to what's going on with these other people. Well, sure. Obviously. But you're, obviously. We're, comparing, we're comparing, again, re-zero bad, which is to say 5 out of 10, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. strong 5, light 6 if, you, if you're lucky, to, to guys who are bottom of the barrel, worst scum of the earth, 
you know, sc- a school look, shooter any, and a fucking uh, mass killer. Like, these any, are the worst any that big we have brother, to offer. Any big brother who protects his little sister from abuse, from an abusive father, I would put above a fucking, like, average. He's better than average. But, okay, whatever. Did he we really disagree. protect her, though, or it. did he just get her beaten up more? Oh, he... Whatever, <laughs> let's move on. I, we know the answer to this question. Uh, what else is, uh, how about, how about, uh, my, uh, Doreen, uh, uh, Dobson, I believe was the male is, name, is right? Is that the, uh, the, the, the trans, <laughs> the pretentious asshole yeah. trans person? Again, very, uh, character I've seen, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I'll tell you, man, Monkey, you portrayed an obnoxious SJW pretty accurately with that character. Like, and the name I think was Dorian and Donovan. Donovan, it was Donovan yeah. and Dorian. You're Donovan right. was like. I want someone to make a Dobson joke, as in the little uh, blue bear guy. Like, I mean, know, it's 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 mind. easy enough to make fun of like a you know SJWs and stuff, and mm-hmm. and and say okay, they're all obnoxious, pretentious shitheads. But like, it's not even that. I think there's plenty of SJWs who are like fine. This person though, I have. This is exactly the type who gets on you on Tumblr. You know, like, this is the, the the portrait of the stereotypical SJW, but they do exist. There are real people like that. And Well, you know, this, this is the character exactly I... Way. This is the character I think I most felt the hand of Mumpkin in, as in, like, yeah, by the way, fuck these people. Uh, don't like them. <laughs> yeah, but them. they're totally real, Here they though. Are. Like, they, of course they're they real. are of course real. They're real. And, uh, and, and I thought but he did a good is, enough job of, like, making it... It didn't mm-hmm. feel like... Um, it didn't feel like just a parody because of the fact that he addressed the backstory that that she that he mm-hmm. became this way that that he wasn't always like this but like now that he's learned the rhetoric of this movement of the social justice movement he's developing these feelings so even though he still hangs out with the fucking triflers who are like these terrible terrible people watching horrible videos yeah. like you know he's still hanging around but he's trying to like convert them to his new age like beliefs and stuff and i thought that was totally believable like i've seen people that- make that transition before that is very but, interesting, and in that it, no pun intended. <laughs> right, true. It kind of shows uh, the character's uh, like deference to power. In that uh, you know, once once uh, you know, because in her life, obviously, she's following trends. That's that's what she's all about. Um, uh, when she saw like, oh, I can get attention if I'm trans, so I'll yeah. do that. I mean, just not that all trans Actually, are like that, but that's what this character um, was. Yeah, and and uh, mm. not to distract from you too much. Sorry, but. Um, no, no. I actually thought I felt the hand of Monkey perhaps too much, just in the fact that the characters, like, like Dawn goes on this whole thing about how she's like, you know, oh, I don't have any problem with trans people. It's just the way that this character acts. That's true. That's that true. Where I felt, did feel that. That felt a little too <laughs> defensive where I was like, why not just make her hate trans people or something? Or, or like Mario when he, I think he has a part where he does something like that with either trans or like blacks or something. He, he has some kind of like defense ah, um, yes. logic. Yes. And I was like, no, just let him be a fucking racist. He's it already really a school did, shooter, uh, you know. <laughs> it did kind of grate on me after a while and annoy me that all the characters sort of talk in YouTube videos. Yeah, like a they'll be bit. like in the middle of a conversation, and, and Dawn will just lapse into like an editorial on on, or you know, Mario does it too. And you know, it's it's like I said before about not really being able to criticize it because I don't know if that's intentional or if that's just the way that like Dawn writes but doesn't mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. speak. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it felt a little too... It's true. It, it really felt a little too editorially at some parts. I agree. There were, I noticed that in moments, and um, yeah, like, she would literally, in her dialogue, suddenly transform into a YouTube video sometimes, and I think that's... I mean, you can defend it all you want. I think it's clumsy writing. Monkey was 20. That's how 20-year-olds write, so, uh, you know, I'm going to blame Monkey for that one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do yeah you swayed me. I'm going to blame Monkey, <laughs> too. The one time, yeah, it was definitely during the the I mean, and I, with, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm saying that because if you go read my light novel that I wrote when I was 20, that happens all the time. Characters will lapse into <laughs> an editorial because I was used to editorial writing. So you know, like in the middle of a conversation, a character will like psychoanalyze himself to explain to another one. Um, so you, you know. should be Nisei Oisin. You're a genius. Nisei Oisin does the same shit, and he started when he was that age. So yeah. He never grew out of it. Uh, well, the, the only whatever I don't. It's silly to go back to it, but I'm just going to finish my point anyway. It was just that uh, uh, Dorian, uh, she was a bitch to social pressure, decided to be a cool trans person, and then when uh, Dawn asserts herself as the leader of the group, she uh, notices she she 
She bows to the new authority in her life, which is Dawn. So shows that she is a weak, spineless person too. There you go. That's just the character. Uh, how about, how about, I mean, there's not a lot to say about Chow or Chow's uncle. Because Chow's uncle, first of all, um, the more interesting of the two, uh, just like a war vet who got a taste for blood, wants to kill people, those, thinks it's really cool. Those two also fascinated me in a way. And I have to ask Mumkey, did you have mm. Asian friends like that before? Are you talking to me? You cut out. Yeah, yeah. Did you have Asian friends like the the two the the brothers? Uh, the yeah, every single person in the Triflers is based off of one of my high school friends. Yeah, I oh. I figured because that Including particular Don? brand yes. of Asian Sick. household is familiar to me, of like um the the kids the you know the the younger generation of the household just being super disaffected because their parents are from a completely different culture and they just don't even know what's going on with their kids like. There's a level of disconnect. Like, you can tell the mother just literally does not understand her children because they are American and she's not, you know? And yeah, so, like, yeah. she just tries to be the default mother because she does not understand what the hell... Well, what, one's her brother, right? Yeah, like it's well, her, yeah, yeah but, but the brother, brother is younger than her, I think, by a, by mm -hmm. a good amount. And he, he being ex-military, he kind of reminded me of, like, a an evil version of... Um, my my friend, my Asian friend Don San, who has a cousin who lives with them, who's who's like that age, and he's like similarly a very like physically active, outgoing guy. You know, mostly kind of quiet, but like watches a lot of movies and does a lot of travel and like lots of interesting, random, weird things. And like this, the 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 you know the older guy um, kind of reminded me of that uh, a little bit. Like it, they just everything about the way that house was described and the way the kids act and everything. I was like, yeah, I've been in that house before. For and to, to some extent, like not that exact one, but it's like an accumulation of different Asian households I've been in, and I totally got it. Um, I thought it was cool because the whole time I was picturing uh, this veteran Chow's uncle as Rambo, you know, the returning <laughs> vet. He's back. He's like, hey man, man, it's really bad in Afghanistan, but I'm back, and I just want to hurt people now. <laughs> Look at my fucking YouTube videos, guys. Yeah, that's uh, that's my Rambo impression. That's. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I was picturing like, like imagine, you know that scene where Don walks into his room to like tell him like, hey, let's start experimenting on people. Yeah. Imagine like Rambo in the corner, just like sitting there all bunched up, just like uh, I got love, his laptop open. I love that she you know? pretentiously criticizes him for having a Pulp Fiction and Fight Club poster. That yeah, really stuck sure with me because I would totally have th those, you know, and like I, yep. it, 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 it was, yeah, that's what that guy would have. Of course he would, you know, like, yeah, he's going to have two good hyper-masculine films in his fucking, you know, well, one's a hyper-masculine film at least, uh, and the other one's comparable. Like, yeah, why wouldn't he? It, it just, a lot of the character details in this book really definitely resonated with me. Like, every character felt like somebody who I kind of knew, and, you know, uh, I feel like Mumkey's high school friends are probably not dissimilar from mine in, in that case. Mm-hmm. I do hmm. want to mention about Chow was that his character was an experiment on my part to see uh, how full-fledged of a character I could create who has zero lines of dialogue in the whole book. And I, yeah, like, I was going guys, to comment on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to see if you guys even noticed that he didn't I, say a I single did, word. I did, but only towards the end. Like, there was a moment where I suddenly was like, this guy's never spoken, has he? Like... Uh, yeah, I thought you did a pretty okay job. Like, I mean, he's obviously, like, the least interesting character because of it, but I felt like I understood his character in spite of it. I sort of, like, spaced out his entire existence in the story. Yeah. Like, I thought, yeah. like, the Chow's uncle was just a guy called Chow's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> It's isn't it fascinating though that the the more active, interesting character there would be referred to as Chow's uncle, while Chow was just yeah. the non-entity in the in the situation. And I I, I will I my one moment that really stuck out to me was when uh, when after the the meeting after uh, she and, and Tao you know the the uncle talk um, and they they announce their plans to the group and Chow just looks bored. Yeah, very <laughs> very interesting, very interesting That's, response. Yeah. To that. and I, I want to like know that. what's going on with this guy. I like that yeah. because I feel like he's just so utterly doesn't give a fuck that it like <laughs> none of it matters like he's just he's a super alpha he doesn't give a fuck yeah. about anything i mean i i feel again <laughs> like i've known i've known people who are kind of like that like i i assume he's probably a pretty smart guy who does well in school 
and like but but doesn't give a like has no particular opinions about anything just doesn't care Mm -hmm. just lets life pass by because he doesn't he has no aspirations and and no (laughs) nothing to care about he's just letting the people around him control and he hangs out with these with the triflers because probably his options are hang out with asian kids or weirdos because you know, as an Asian kid, you're probably not gonna hang out with like jocks and, and all the like white kids or whatever, you know. So you're gonna end up hanging out with like the either the freaks or the other Asians, and he ends up hanging out Damn with the dog. freaks, you know. Yeah, I love casual racism. Chinese people can't not, do not anything. Not being racist, I'm if racist. anything being sympathetic towards. This is what like towards towards the weaker race of Asians. No, I mean people. I understood. My understood. group of friends, I I was the freaks <laughs> in high school, you know, and like. That's who. Are you saying that Asians are the freaks of society? No, oh, I'm no. saying that. Oh no! Like for instance, um, my friend Brandon Tolentino, <laughs> he hung out with this guy Arn pretty much exclusively because both of them were Filipino, and so they hung out hmm. together. Hmm. Even though they weren't necessarily friends, they just hung out because they were the Filipino kids, and that's what you just end up gravitating to people who are your race. My high school yeah. was extremely yeah. mixed, so we had like probably half the school was black, half the school was white, and then a, and you know some percentage of other ethnicities and like the black kids all hung out together and the white kids all hung out together and the ethnic kids all hung out together and the only group that was like super mixed like you know there'd be mixing here and there but it was the freaks and weirdos who was a a true multicultural group because we're internet denizens and stuff we don't give a fuck you know we're we're outsiders Mm -hmm. we don't feel like Mm -hmm. we're part of our race so that's how a kid like that ends up with a group like that I think yeah yeah he was in a bit of an enigma to me um, well, shit. Uh, what else we got? Have we talked enough about Mario specifically? Because I feel like we we might have uh, glazed over him a little bit uh, in our in our rush to talk about other guys. I I um, love the way he's that fat. <laughs> he is fat, unfortunately. I think the the best thing about Mario, um, in his presentation in this book, is that mm. this book shits on him in a big way, like. Because I know he's based on Elliot Roger, and Monkey's done, he's read the entire Elliot Roger, um, you know, uh, mm-hmm, manifesto mm-hmm. and all that. And one of the things about Monkey's relationship, relationship with Elliot Roger is that he does make fun of the guy and point out that he's a fucking retarded idiot. And mm-hmm, that's a big mm-hmm. part of this book is that Mario spends this whole book building himself up and having all these grandiose opinions, and in the end, he accomplishes almost nothing. You know, he just, he goes in, he he kills one guy who is the guy who stopped him, who becomes a fucking martyr and a hero for all time, you know? His so, target as one of these true. people that have to be disposed of was the hero you know, yeah, and yeah. save people. The, the, yeah, real, yeah. the real lesson to take away from it is thank God that mass killers are always the weakest, most beta yeah. pathetic people in society. Because <laughs> yeah. if they were strong yeah. like me, we'd all be doomed. Right. Well, you know, if they, if they had avenues, if they had levers at their disposal to climb social ranks and alleviate their issues, they probably would. But they, I, they that's the thing, right? I they just, get pushed to the point of desperation. I love it because I feel like most people, if they heard about a mass shooting book, they would assume it's going to in some way glamorize it or paint it as like this big epic thing. And the book, there's a lot of build up to this school shooting. So you're thinking it's going to be this like huge epic bloodbath or a big action scene. And instead the book Mm -hmm. goes way out of its way to undercut it as harshly as possible. And so if you, you know, let's say someone tried to read this book thinking, Oh, I'm like, like some edge Lord's like, Oh, I want to read about a fucking school shooting. Yeah. And then they get to that part and it just slaps them in the face with how retarded a school school shooter I would, is and I, how badly he fucks up you know i hope the school i hope that edge lords the world over read this book and realize how that's not yeah you got to be a little bit like dawn and realize yeah. that school shootings are highly inefficient <laughs> at changing the world and yeah. uh, oh my god it'll well, cure them avenues. of their beta depression mario's plan Hopefully. will finally be fulfilled yeah. he will have accomplished you know, his goal after all Mario's biggest problem to me, I think, was a lack of self-awareness. And oh, even yeah. when Don well, clearly that's the points with every out the school like, shooter is a lack of self-awareness. They don't realize very true, very it's just true. not realizing that it's your fault, not the world's, or or that the people who it is their fault, you're completely misguided on who they are. Like Elliot Roger, yeah, there's people yeah. he could have blamed, but he didn't blame those people. You know, he blamed yeah, um, yeah. the girls who wouldn't sleep with him because they literally he just never even asked so because he never even like asked, yeah. so mario you know his his rage is completely misguided and the book points that out and shows it this book paints mario as a fucking idiot and it paints his his revenge as pathetic yeah. and yeah. it paints him as a failure and i think that's great because i don't think 
that a lot of... I don't think there's a lot of people who could have written that and still made it feel real. Like, there's people who would have... Uh, you know, imagine, like, a normie guy writing this book. Like, someone who, like, heard about a school shooting who's just, like, some guy. They'd read fucking 13 you know? Reasons Why or some exactly. shit like that, you know? And, and yeah, that's the problem yeah, with 13. That's what you get. You know, there's a, the Netflix series airing right now, and Victor pointed this out, that in that mm. show, there's a character who they're building up to be a school shooter, but he doesn't have the personality of one. He doesn't act like right, what a school right. shooter would act like, that any in, anyone could point that out. Mario is a completely realized school shooter, but the book still shits on him for being that. That, you know, and I think that's a, mm -hmm. a cool aspect of it that uh, was it was definitely one of the funnier twists in the book to read him just like utterly get shit on and fail horribly. And it was like, ha, <laughs> you dumb fuck, which I mean, I mean, <laughs> uh, the guy who I know, the school shooter that I grew up with, who was a friend of mine when I was a little kid, um, he didn't even get to accomplish it because he made YouTube videos bragging about all his guns and how he was going to shoot up a school. And so he got busted because he's a fucking retard. So, you <laughs> know. Bad what planning. about that American hero who tackled Mario and wrestled the yeah. grenade out of him and, and blew up? The, well, that, that That's was the, Bryce. Bryce whatever. Yeah. Bryce yeah. Dallas Howard. And what's, Howard, what's great about that is that school. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Thundercock. What, what's great about greatest, that part is, you, you know, know, Mario had portrayed that guy as like this asshole normie piece of shit. But he's clearly mm. like like a yeah a total hero like he saves well that's kind of lives, that's what, you know that's kind of what jesse says all the time about he was aspires to norminess yeah, norminess you know, is next when to godliness you're, when you're when you're an outsider of society, it's easy to just demonize everybody or, or view them as you know because they're ostracizing you and they must be evil but uh and you know to a certain extent it's kind of like um uh you know, like a uh, an outsider mentality like if you're not one of us uh you know we're gonna treat you like shit but at the very least, at the very least, these people are they're pretty good to each other, you know? They yeah. they want to protect each other. Guys like Bryce. Not a bad guy. Certainly not probably a bad guy for bragging about some the, sluts that he may or may not have fucked. He, he probably mm -hmm. has, like, parents in the military who, while strict with him and therefore he acts out, they nonetheless mm -hmm. are, like, very proud people. Like, very, America's a beautiful place. You gotta protect your citizens, you know? I bet that's the house he grew up See, in. See, that, that's the thing about guys like Mario, or even guys like, you know, ISIS or whatever. Like, they, they're viewing... Individuals guys as part like of ISIS. like this. <laughs> I hate that guy. He's the worst. I, I, not a not a fan of that guy. Uh, yeah, like these they they paint. You know, like the the whole terrorist and and Mario is literally a terrorist. Like he's hoping to inspire terror yeah. to make society change. That's literally what what terrorism is. And um, uh, like it, it you have to view people as part of a collective because he's just Mario had specific targets, right? Of course, but Mario didn't care to like look into their stories, and and you can see this clearly that he was not even interested in diving deeper no. when he starts painting people like Marissa, this angel who gave him a chance and was such a wonderful person to him that he did everything wrong to and destroyed his own chances with. He says like I would have loved to have killed her too, but she's not at this school because it's all about him yeah. and how he's the sad one and how you know uh, the why hasn't life and, been nice. And that's exactly what Elliot Roger was like. That he was That's he right. wanted to kill That's his right. own little brother who he literally loved and who never did anything yeah. wrong. And he wanted to kill him so that he wouldn't turn out. Because one day normie. he will have sex. Yeah. One day he'll have sex, <laughs> and that's unacceptable. That cannot happen. What a fucking monster. Ugh. Not a fan of that guy. Um, which is why, you know, uh, just on a little rant here, I, I get pretty pissed when people like uh, lionize Elliot. Or, like, celebrate him in any way. Because he's just a monster that no one should, like, admire in any way. Uh, there's probably... I'm sure there's a great deal of irony going on here. But, uh, you know, the water's getting muddy to some points. So, I guess I'm just saying, uh, don't get carried away with it, folks. He's not a good person. He is a literal murderer. If he saw you, he would kill you. So, keep that in mind. Uh, huh. Do we have anything well, else to say about the book? Any any un untapped? Any um shit? Monkey, oh, is you know there anything what? you want to hear us talk okay. about, about your book? Mm -hmm. uh, no, nothing specific. I was just going to say I've been waiting over a year to hear people have an actual conversation about this, and I thought it would, like when I was writing it, I thought it would never happen. I thought nobody would read it. So this last hour has been, like, pretty fucking great for me. Like, even, even the parts where you're shitting on some of the writing, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, finally, somebody is acknowledging <laughs> yeah. what I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All it takes is a hero like Nate Bestman to read your book, and bam, <laughs> yeah. instant, well, I, instant celebrity. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Monkey about some of my issues with it back in March, but I, again, wanted to hold off until more people had read it, because I was literally the first person 
to read it because I got an early mm-hmm. copy. Um, so I didn't want to like air any of this out and like, you know, when people get it in their heads that they're going to read it that way. Like if anyone listened to this podcast before reading the book, they're going to yeah, now read yeah. some of our criticisms into it. But uh, but they'll also read our more in-depth analysis into it. So, you know. Yeah. You I'm just, I just want to say know. that I'm uh, mm-hmm. I'm immensely proud of you, Monkey, that you actually wrote this book and published it yourself, and that you have an actual, like a real novel under your belt. That's amazing to me. It's um, it's a thing mm-hmm. that I haven't done, and it's a thing that I respect immensely, far more than any ridiculous, retarded <laughs> YouTube video. Of course. Beautiful. I, yeah, just I to add to like... that, I would say this mm-hmm. book is the only thing I've ever made in my life that I'm proud of. Like, all the YouTube is just like a <laughs> fucking joke to me compared to this thing. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, I'd say that uh, just on a, on a, on a I don't know, a, a literary note, I guess, this thing was an absolute page turner and uh, consumed it uh, voraciously and, and loved reading it. And it was really, I, really good. I will say... And, uh, I read this mm-hmm. book in a night because I was trying to read it before Monkey got to my house. Um, incidentally, mm-hmm. I read the entire book while nonstop listening to Slipknot, Corn, and Marilyn Manson. Um, <laughs> and I would highly recommend you do the same so you can get into the school shooter mindset. But uh, <laughs> I read the entire book listening to the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast, <laughs> talking about <laughs> wrestling. Um, <laughs> Doing it for the working man. Give me your hell yeah! I will say that <laughs> I think the early part... There's, there's like this book has a lot of buildup, and I do think it's probably longer than it needs to be. Um, I think that the midsection is the weak point. When, when we get to Dawn working at the ice cream place, like up and like when she gets locked in the freezer, pretty much everything from that onwards is great. Like that's where the book really takes off. Is after after she gets out of the freezer and all of her schemes from then on, all of that is fantastic. Um, and the early part where they're setting up the characters is good, but just that midsection when she gets the job and she goes into so much fucking detail about working there, I, like, had I not been trying to finish the book that night, I would have been at risk of not finishing the book, just because I read books while I take a shit a lot of the time, I try to get through, like, (laughs) one chapter per shit, and if I read a whole chapter of just Don fucking describing her workplace, I would have been like, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, my name is Don Brackett. I work at Dairy Queen. I like to be <laughs> mean to people and torture people. I'm a really smart girl. <laughs> That's the whole book. I want the Jesse Wood audiobook of, uh, yes! of the Triforce. Yeah, Force that'd be great. With that as Don's uh, voice as at all times, through all her narration. Yeah, I wear pink socks because I'm a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Lol, well, fucking exposed. Uh, I, uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to say that I, yeah, like I, I loved reading this. Uh, I tried my best to finish it in one sitting, but uh, I am a genius. But I could not finish it in the four and a half hours of my first flight. So I took till I came home from from the trip I was on. Uh, it was it was wonderful. I I was thoroughly entertained the whole way. I I did not find uh, the the like I I was in hard enough by the point where she got to that where I was I was totally willing to to take the journey that Dawn was providing me of like exploring her workplace because I knew that it was leading to something. And and when when the place burns down and you you get to think about all the all the details that she gave us all going up in flames, I enjoyed that immensely. And. Uh, I don't know. I, maybe I have more patience or something, for better or ill. Uh, I was I was disgusted on deep levels, but in the right ways. I was I was provoked. I was I was made to think about real things. And and I'm a very I, I don't know a very like issues driven kind of guy. And you really presented things in a way that 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 as you've shown that you're quite capable of doing. Uh, you know, really made me think about the real issues going on here behind the scenes, not just a fucking puff piece about school shooters. Now cool they are. You really got down to the deep issues, and I could, it seemed to me, uh, uh, that a lot of it came from, you know, not, not to uh, go crazy here with conspiracies here, but like, like you, you really understood, you know, like the, the, the motivations that would go for a character like Mario, and, and the way that you're able to construct this, you know, not, not like a complete ripoff of Elliot or anything, but like this new character, yeah. you know, having all the, the j- just a real clear understanding of why someone would be driven to this point, I thought was fascinating, especially as someone who has probably never had anything close to clinical depression. For me, it was a very educating experience to just kind of dive down into this world and, and see what it's like down there and uh, and to, to, I don't know, maybe hopefully be able to use this experience to do what I think you want people to take away, think about how to act actively 
avoid this shit in the future and and see what we can do. But uh, that's um, that's where I'm at. It was great. Yeah, loved it. To summarize my thoughts, I mean, I think this is a really impressive book and piece of work, especially for having been written by a fucking twenty year old. Um, mm-hmm. because again, I get inundated with people sending me shit they've written all the time. I usually can't make it past the first paragraph or the first page. And this is from people who, you know, tout themselves as writers, like people who really think, oh my God, this is what I'm going to do. And I love writing and they send me something and it's bullshit. Um, you know, I expected it to not be shit because your videos aren't shit. But when I was started reading it, I didn't expect to be like hooked and actually want to read the whole thing. And I did, um, you know, mm-hmm. it's it, obviously it's interesting if we could get this much fucking conversation out of it, which is more than I can say for a lot of s- stories. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, I had a good time. I would say, you know, weak parts aside, it's still a really interesting book. Lots, lots to relate to, lots to connect with. And for what it's worth, I'm extremely excited to see where you'll go later because writing, unlike any other medium, is not something that anyone is a master at young. Uh, There's never been a, like, world-famous author who got world-famous before their 30s. Like, everyone has to work up for that. What about the famous author Harry Potter? His his series of autobiographies (laughs) sold a trillion copies. But I think the only outlier would be Essie Hilton, who wrote um, The Outsiders when she was, like, 16. But otherwise, you're pretty much right. Yeah, authors Mm -hmm. authors never blow up huge when they're young. It's one of the only mediums where, like, you really have to study at it for, for a long time. And so to be putting out something impressive enough... That three relatively harsh critics, mind you, uh, are. I mean, I at least I'm a relatively harsh critic. If this wasn't you know. interesting, you'd know. Yeah, you'd you would know. definitely <laughs> know. From me, I'd let you know. So to have written that at 20, I can't wait to see what you will be writing by the time you are 30. If you're still writing fiction, um, and if you still have ideas that are at least you know half as interesting as this one, um, I can only assume you'll get better as a writer as time goes on. So yeah, I, I you know. I think I'm with Digi on the fact that I think simplicity might be key for your next work. So when you're writing that and you say goodbye, cruel world, and you're heading off to that rope hanging in your closet, that, uh, you know, just just leave it at that, you know? Just leave it at that. What? Kill, what you kill yourself. About? I'm saying kill yourself. That's what is I'm my, getting is at. Is my next big magnum opus um, going to be a suicide fucking suicide note? You're suicide. Yeah, that's, okay. what yeah, that's, that's, what that's, that's what I'm getting. That's the joke. Thought. That's the I, joke. Okay, great. good. Toad that went over Bam. my head. Closer. Closer. <laughs> Nailed it. I think we should all agree that next week we'll come back <laughs> together and review that anime snobs book in the same way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's, what's some, the status someone, on that? Someone should read that and let me know how it is, though. I was told it's an autistic version of Dune. <laughs> okay. That sounds, that sounds great. like what he would write, <laughs> so I'm not surprised at all by that. When, when did he write this? When did he write it? <laughs> no idea. Hmm. All right. Yeah, like a year ago. Oh, we should have had him on this right now to review the book. What were we thinking? Has he read it yet? Did he read the Hello, no, it's me. I came in for the last part of the podcast. It, right? It's me. Yeah, the he's never going to read it because I won't send him a PDF. Yeah. What a piece <laughs> of shit. Uh, well, so long. All right, everybody. Peter go Zane. buy the triflers on the link in the description if you haven't read it yet and you'd like to. Um... Written by Monkey Jones. He's proud of it. We're proud of it. So, uh, yeah. you know. And we're not just saying that because he's a... And maybe someday we can be proud of him, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. That's the whole point of my life, is to make my parents proud. I haven't done it yet, but hopefully someday. Well, here's hoping. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye!